Preach gets arrested, Billy and Grace come to a head, and Spolivia is giving a little bit of a vibe. What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Bain coming to you right here on Erica Bain TV with another All American video. In this video, we are going to break down episode number 12, or at least try to do so, child. This is probably going to be one of my shorter breakdowns because, in all honesty, y'all, I was a little underwhelmed by the episode. While I'm very excited that Daniel Ezra got his shot and made his directorial debut with this episode, the content sense of it and the story just kind of felt all over the place and it doesn't feel like the all-american that we know and love but without further ado i'm going to at least talk about it because you know every week we talk about it we did do a live stream after show so after all-american and all-american at homecoming i always go live to discuss the all-american universe everything that's going on our initial reactions thoughts theories and predictions for moving forward if you missed it go ahead and check out that video it is up available for replay right now now this episode starts off with preach kind of at the focus preach and amina pop up at great his house and there's a little bit of miscommunication which also it just sets the tone for like how great preach is doing right he's doing his dad thing him and amina are vibing she gives him a photo and then cut to a little bit later on he is getting arrested at the school the investigator that you know new evidence has arisen in the whole mo murder case came forward and there was a witness who apparently recorded part of the shooting but he only recorded the part of preach actually shooting mo and it's not until the very end of the episode and Laura Baker coming on board as Preach's lawyer that we actually get further evidence and she deep dives even more to be able to show a different angle get to show that Mo actually fires the first shot and we free Preach. Grace in this episode has some very interesting beats because watching Preach get arrested on school grounds really sends her into like a little emotional tailspin and kind of confirms why she didn't want Preach to be in the school to begin with and her whole storyline it comes to a head when Spencer actually confronts her about having some type of empty nester syndrome and overreacting because of it and even that kind of felt like it was a little out of place and a little random like I would have loved to be able to see if Grace is starting to suffer from the idea that Spencer isn't there anymore because technically she don't have empty nest Dylan is still very much so there so listening to Spencer say Carter is working on his political things and I'm not here and this and that like I would have loved to see her actually start to fidget or get in previous episodes episodes just little seeds of things of her being uncomfortable with how things were changing before we're hit with this in this episode this declaration from Spencer of like oh yeah you are just responding to preach this way because you don't like how things are changing it really kind of like blindsides us in a way I think the strongest thing of this episode was preaching the storyline of him you know getting arrested potentially going away for 25 years for Mo's murder but then Laura getting him off after digging deep with the evidence he has a few emotional beats with Amina in this episode who also felt a little erratic like this young woman has been very vindictive manipulative and sneaky this entire time she has a beat in this episode where she gets super mad at preach once he you know confesses to killing her mom and then almost immediately after a little bit more information is presented after coop talks to her she's fine and she's apologetic and i'm just like well we've been talking to this girl now for almost a season and a half and she's been holding this vendetta and drawing little drawings and looking up photos and videos and whatnot but now all of a sudden within the course of one episode she all is forgiven and now she has realized the error in her ways that kind of didn't feel true to her character but it happened in this episode for the most part the episode was kind of light which is fine I just felt like it was a bunch of things happening with the characters and not necessarily things that were going to move the story that I thought we were telling along like we really get some cool beats between Layla and Jordan in this episode where Jordan is able to show up for her as a friend in one of the best ways possible is so dope so I did enjoy seeing them Layla starts to spiral because her dad is completely in a different mood he's moving different he's taking a step back from his record label and he's pushing for her to you know go harder with hers giving her potential artists to sign and she starts to worry like oh is he dying is he sick is something going on when come to find out he just met a woman and now he's you know shifting his priorities and everything to be able to be fully into that and committed in that relationship and this is the first real committed person since his mother and i guess we're not going to think about china <laughs> back in season one but okay 
this is the first committed person he's been with since Layla's mom. So, you know, he's definitely treading lightly in that way. And Jordan provides a ton of perspective and additional thoughts for Layla in this episode. Specifically the point about, you know, JP hasn't introduced Layla yet because he's waiting to get her permission to do so. And when the moment that, you know, Jordan makes that clear to her, she gives him the permission and then it's like the floodgates open. So it's really good to see that in this episode. I think that this storyline is a little bit closer to a through line for Layla specifically as a character. Everyone else kind of feels like we're deviating or we're doing something different. Like I definitely feel very caught off guard by Grace's disposition, both to preach and how she's going about this whole, you know, principal thing. I was all for her potentially giving Billy a run for her money, but then her introducing the actual candidate, which is the goddess council that was on Coop's head about missing all those days last semester. Girl, don't nobody know you. We ain't root for you. We want Billy. It's Grace or Billy that's it those are the options don't be introducing no new options this late into the game ain't nobody got time for that another thing y'all that i have to say and i'm probably going to say it every time i see it so go ahead and get ready buckle in and just get used to it okay why is spencer still at this beach house when we actually open the episode we open it on spencer and olivia and i think this is spencer's room at the beach house this makes absolutely no sense to me the fact that we went through him struggling to find balance and couldn't keep up with his schedule running to the wrong classes doing all of this in the last episode as well as the episode prior to like really struggling to get acclimated and then now we're sitting out at the beach house waking up to our girlfriend which is cute and all it's giving all the vibes but it's not really Realistic. He is a freshman college recruit. The fact that he's not living on campus makes absolutely no sense to me. The fact that this episode there's completely like while, aside from him starting the episode and doing his yoga to make sure he maintains his zen, he is sitting at the coffee shop. He is in Grace's business. He is helping put together the art thing. He is speaking to Jabari and getting him together back at Grace's house. He is doing all of the things that have nothing to do with football and nothing to do with college. Now all of a sudden we have a full day to just frolic, but we had to leave, you know, and come back in an hour the other day with the coach because you had to make time for Olivia. But now you got a whole free day where you're frolicking with Olivia. I want them to make it make sense because for me right now it don't. That just goes to my point of the last episode. If we knew that this was coming and he was about to get a free day, then he definitely didn't need to leave then. He definitely didn't need to drop everything that he was doing. He definitely didn't need to figure that out in that moment. That could have been for that. And then this could have been for this. I don't know y'all watching I was kind of lost a lot of the time while I can follow what's happening specifically because all of the characters are the same but the story kind of feels like it's changing as well as like the tone and the setup of All American as a show feels like it's changing. I don't know if I would go as far as to say if this was a filler episode but maybe this is the episode that really starts to acclimate us to a new type of all-american because as i mentioned it just doesn't feel like the all-american from seasons one and season two someone mentioned that it feels like a sitcom and i definitely got that a little bit of that vibe looking at the episode from last night we do have a couple of really dope you know emotional moments jabari speaking on preach and how preach has been a really great example for him i think like i mentioned preach's storyline in this episode was the strongest and the best in that it was the most fully thought out and i love the tie-in that they have to jabari finding hope and seeing inspiration and in preach preach being able to beat this case and show up at the end amina be able to speak to her dad and the overarching story about you know how hard it is for people who have gone through the prison industrial system and then come out and try to rehabilitate their lives try to resurrect their lives and the struggles that they feel and how they are automatically you know judged and ostracized and all of the things that are happening to them i thought that this was beautiful and how they showed it in this episode and again the strongest storyline by the end of the episode everything gets wrapped up in a nice little neat bow everything is all good aside from the fact that coop gets arrested for lying about shooting mo so we're going to keep the storyline going we kind of put the mo thing to bed in this episode but they're going to keep it going in reference to prosecuting her for this lie and at this point if she gotta go to jail she's just gonna have to go to jail because i'm kind of over it all right, that's my full breakdown. It was a little bit longer than I anticipated, so I guess I had more to say, but if you want to check out even more of a conversation about it, be sure to hit up that live that we did last night. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of my All-American videos. All-American Homecoming Breakdown to come, and that episode was lit. So keep it locked.